It is Election Day in America. Polls are opening earlier this morning on the East Coast as Americans cast a ballot for President Trump's re-election bid or make Joe Biden the 46th president. Nearly 100 million Americans have already voted in an election that is unlike any other we have ever seen. Joining me right now with their insights is former senior advisor to President George W. Bush and Fox News contributor Carl Rove. Carl, it is good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. What strikes you, you about where we are today? and what we will learn later. What a wild and weird, weird journey it's been for the, for the past uh, most of the year. So it, it's going to be an exciting election and uh, lots of twists and turns available. But uh, it's been wild. I'm, I'm going to be watching tonight early on. Remember, President Trump got 306 electoral votes. Uh, he, he got 304 when the Electoral College voted because there were two Texans who flipped and voted for somebody else. Those boys are still on the run. The Rangers are after him. But he's got 36 votes, 36 electoral votes that he can give and still be at 270. So early in the evening, I'm going to be watching to see Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and Ohio, which report relatively early, and then later on, Iowa and Arizona. These are states that are considered to be uh, in competition that Trump won. And then I'm also going to be watching the blue wall, which is 46 electoral votes in Pennsylvania, 20, Michigan with 16, and Wisconsin with 10. The problem is, is that Pennsylvania has, has not only uh, not—it's uh, extended the date by which it can receive ballots until Friday, but it is also a state where they're not going to be able to begin opening the million-plus uh, early votes, mail-in votes, and began verifying them until tonight, which means they, they're not going to have much of a count out of those by the end of the night. We're, we're not going to know the final outcome in Pennsylvania until at least Friday when they get the last uh, boatload of, of uh, ballots in the mail. And Wisconsin, however, will be starting to count again today, just like Pennsylvania. But uh, at least today is the deadline for, uh, for the people in Wisconsin to turn in their ballots. Yeah, what did you think about what the Attorney General of Pennsylvania said yesterday on Twitter that basically uh, Biden is winning? Well, uh, a state attorney general, with the exception of the state attorney generals of Alaska and, and uh, New Jersey, are, uh, are pl political animals. They're all elected on a partisan ballot, so we shouldn't be surprised that he would think his party's candidate was winning. The question is, do, do his official actions reflect that? And he's got to be cognizant of the fact that he can't make unilateral decisions. Uh, he's speaking on behalf of his state, and he is subject then uh, to, uh, you know, uh, counter arguments. Uh, either the federal government or private parties, like the Republican Party or the Trump campaign, can challenge his decisions in court. Yeah. And it ain't going to look good for him if, if he ends up uh, being overridden by, by state judges, federal judges in the system. Well, that's right. And that's why I question it, because he writes, if all the votes are added up in Pennsylvania, Trump is going to lose. That's why he's working overtime to subtract as many votes as possible from this process. This from a sitting attorney general. Let me ask you about James Freeman's new uh, op-ed in the journal, and it's titled Biden's Closing Argument, Carl. Freeman writes that Joe Biden closing his campaign with insults hurled at President Trump despite having a campaign promising decency. Your take on this, Carl? I, I think James is absolutely right. I've been astounded the last week. I, I wrote last week about the closing arguments he made he, in, in speeches in uh, Warm Springs, Georgia, and earlier in Gettysburg, which his campaign said, this is our closing argument, which were vacuous. They were a call for unity. The, lots of people have successfully made the call for unity in a presidential campaign. Ronald Reagan did. He said, we need to unify our country. But, but behind yeah. what? A, a supply-side tax cut, strong military, limited role for the federal government, restoration of American optimism. Franklin Roosevelt tried to unify the country behind a program of temporary work, public works programs, and experimentation so that no, as he said, no one would starve. But uh, my man McKinley, let's unite the country uh, behind uh, the principles of sound money, gold-backed dollars, and protectionism. But what is he, what is the unity behind uh, behind Biden? It's I'm not Trump, and then he spends the last seven or eight tri days doing a very bad imitation of Trump by just I mean he called the called the the the, uh, uh, the president a liar and a coward and weak and you know threatened to go out and thrash him in the schoolyard and I mean this is just weird. Here's a guy who spent the yeah. uh, most of the year hiding out in his basement and being saying I'm going to be the unifier. I'm not Trump, and then turns around and tries to tries to be the you know, sort of tough man on the on the stump, sort of weird.
Well, it's also the same vein, and, you know, here's aw shucks Joe from Scranton and, uh, you know, campaigning on character, and we get the laptop from hell, which shows all these big business dealings uh, that Hunter yeah. had and uh, pocketed money with them. So there's that yeah. as well. Carl, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being Yeah, final you word. Bet. Go ahead, Carl. Well, I just it's it is weird uh, that he uh, does this, and it's also I, I wish the president was stronger on saying uh, Biden reminding people Biden said Hunter did nothing wrong. He already condemned himself by that phrase. Yep. Well, we know that that's not true. Actually, Carl, great to see you. Thank you.